Hey guys, I'm doing another video this morning and I want to talk about time, times, and the dividing of time that we see three times in the Bible. And I want to apply this to what we've been talking about recently on the changing of times and laws. And we see both together in Daniel 7, 25. And with this changing of times and laws, last video I introduced the playlist where I've made several videos over the past um, few weeks to months on the possibility that time has been added to our chronology um, a thousand years and this time period we know very well as the dark ages or middle ages and you know i give a lot of evidence that this may in fact have some merit and you know i didn't make, just make this up <laughs> you know I'm looking at the Bible and trying to understand through Daniel's prophetic words what this changing of times and laws may be. Um, you know, the Bible doesn't say that there can be no time added to our chronology and that mankind does not have the capability of do that, but just the opposite, that there is a period of changing of times and laws and what is this and i'm simply questioning that so i've got a little bit of pushback on this not too much um i think it stems from uh those who are set in their eschatology viewpoint whatever it is i think mainly pre-millennialism um and that's fine you know I can take it. I, I can take ridicule. I've been um, through six years of surgery residency, four years of college football. I've been coached up and beat on by the best. A few comments aren't going to hurt me um, from me seeking the truth because that's what this channel does. It teaches the true gospel and it seeks the truths of the Bible. And wherever the spirit and scripture leads me, that's what I'm going to present to you guys. And if it is counter to orthodoxy, as long as it doesn't contradict scripture, but can be shown that there are many verses which can harmonize these ideas and topics, then I'm going to present it. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying, look at the evidence. Don't scoff at it. Consider it first. Um, and then, you know read the Bible, see if these things are so, be a Berean. But simply answering a matter before hearing it, that's shame on you, that's folly, as it says in Proverbs 18, 13. So let's look at these verses as it applies to time, times, and the dividing of time in this concept. Because this is a new eschatology viewpoint. If this uh, has some merit that a thousand years has been added to our calendar because if you subtract those thousand years from our timeline, then we're not in 2018, we're in 1018 after Jesus Christ and are less than a thousand, but quickly coming up to that thousand year reign of Jesus Christ since his death, burial, and resurrection until his return. So that's one of the many reasons that this should be looked at closer. And so let's look at the verse which started me thinking about this and looking into it more, Daniel 7, 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, speaking of the Antichrist, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. And we know from 1 John 2, 18, that you have heard that there is Antichrist to come, but now there's many Antichrists because we are in the last time. So there are many Antichrists. And since the death, burial, and resurrection, it has been this time period of the Holy Spirit indwelling believers versus the Antichrist in the world and this spiritual battle that we see in Ephesians 6. And I believe that this millennial reign is a literal thousand years. We see it six times in Revelation 20 discussing this 
as far as end times, and we see it right after Revelation 6 through 19, which shows Jesus' first coming in Revelation 6 on the white horse, his death, burial, and resurrection, he was crowned with a crown of thorns, and his glory is presented through the gospel, his death, burial, and resurrection, and Revelation 19, where it is prophesied of his second coming. Um, this thousand years, and it's summarized in Revelation 20. And I'll start in verse 2, and this is speaking of the angel that comes down from heaven, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon it, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little season. And I saw thrones. And they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loose out of his prison. And it goes on from there. But we see just in six verses, we see a thousand years mentioned six times. Um, I think it's for a reason. I think because this is a literal thousand year reign of Christ from his first coming to a second coming. And that can't be possible if it's 2018 because it's been longer than a thousand years. And an amillennial viewpoint will look at this thousand years as a spiritual church age uh, and not a literal thousand years because obviously if we agree with the year that we're in as 2018 after the birth of Jesus Christ, then it can't be taken literally. That's the reason that there's other eschatology viewpoints. Um, and the pre-millennialism and the post-millennialism, they both look at the millennium as a literal thousand years, but they look at it in the future. Um, the post-millennial view will look at it before the return of Jesus Christ, there's this golden age where there's peace and harmony and everybody has heard the gospel and has believed. And there's this time of uh, peace on earth, on literal earth in the flesh, this earthly kingdom. And then Jesus comes after this thousand years. The premillennial view will look at Jesus returning to establish his millennial reign on earth, an earthly fleshly kingdom. But this both those don't align with what Jesus said over and over that his kingdom is not flesh, but it's a spiritual kingdom. And so, in my opinion, when Jesus returns, he's not going to be establishing a new earthly kingdom where there's still going to be people in the flesh, but he's going to judge the world the fleshly, worldly kingdom that we know now, and a new heavens and new earth will come into existence. And so let's go back again to Daniel 7.25. Let's look at this closer. The changing of times and laws that we see in the first half of the verse, and after that, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. So, as I've mentioned many times, prophecy has multiple layers often. There's a near-far dualism, if you will, where the prophet will mention something in prophecy and it has application for that generation, but there's also a future generation where that prophecy can be fulfilled a second time. And that's true with anything in the Bible. There are multiple layers of spiritual truth. Same thing goes with prophecy. And so we know from orthodoxy and the traditional view of what this time and times and the volume of time is, 
they will say that this is the 42 months or three and a half years that we see the time representing one year, the times representing two years, and the dividing of time representing a half year, you add this up and it's three and a half years. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm saying that there could be multiple layers though of this prophecy. So let's look at it thinking about the changing of times and laws. And let's look at it thinking about the possibility of evil men being led by spiritual wickedness in high places to deceive mankind on earth through the changing of time. And I told you how I thought this happened back in the middle of the thousand years. If we look at the death, burial, and resurrection happening around 30 to 33 AD, and currently, if it's 1018, then I think the addition of the thousand years came approximately at that halfway point. This period of time of the Dark Ages, where we know is roughly 500 or so AD to 1500 AD. What if this thousand years was inserted right in the middle of a literal thousand years to double the time? And I hope you see where I'm going with this. And I, I talked about the Gregorian calendar being the perfect way for the Roman Catholic Church to the beast system, you know, to deceive mankind. And with the sleight of hand, add a thousand years to the calendar. And the playlist goes through several videos where I talk about this, where Pope Gregory the 13th in 1582 introduced the Gregorian calendar and changed the time from the Julian calendar to this new Gregorian calendar, the perfect time in the middle of this thousand years uh, to add an additional thousand years. So might this prophecy of Daniel be talking about that? A time being the millennial reign and then times, which most people say is the doubling of that time. What if it's not one year, but what if it's a thousand years? Just like in 2 Peter 3, 8, you know, that we, that we see um, that says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. What if this was a literal thousand years this time? And then we see the next word, and times, a doubling of this thousand years, a 2000, and then, and the dividing of time. So what if this additional time period divided time as we know it, this millennial reign, this thousand years, and by the adding of times to the timeline, in the middle of it, we've divided time and added to it. We've added a thousand years in the middle of a millennial reign. Let's look at another time when this is mentioned, and it's also in the book of Daniel, Daniel 12, 7. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand into heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. So... As we know, the Antichrist, the beast system, the false prophets, you know, this has been around. We've been struggling against and battling against spiritual wickedness and principalities in high places. And this time, times and a half, what if this was talking about not only possibly the end times tribulation, three and a half years where the literal Antichrist will come, but also the Antichrist spirit that has come and is come in these last times. What if this time that it's talking about here in Daniel 7.25, Daniel 12.7, is also talking about the time of the millennial reign, the thousand-year reign from Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection to a second coming, and that this times is the addition of the time that we may have experience in the past and that has divided the middle 
in the Middle Ages has divided the millennial reign and doubled it because of the addition of this thousand years in the middle of our timeline of our chronology. Let's look at it again one more time, the third and last time that it's mentioned in the Bible, Revelation 12, 14, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nursed for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. So, you know, in other videos, I talk about the woman being heavenly Jerusalem, you know, the mother above, who's mother of us all as believers once we place our faith in Jesus Christ. And once we place our faith in Jesus Christ, we are spiritually reborn into holy Jerusalem, into the body of Christ to be nourished. And those that have been placed into the body of Christ, there's nothing to fear from the face of the serpent. You're spiritually regenerated and you're kept by the power of God into the day of redemption. You're sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise until that time. Um, and so could this be, again, not only maybe talking about the three and a half years in times tribulation, but also talking about the addition of times to our timeline, um, which divided it in the middle of the thousand years doubling it through the dark ages this what i think this fabricated period where real where events and people and places either were completely fabricated the names were changed um and it happened more contemporaneously and basically were just given false places false names to fill in this timeline this thousand years or they were real places, real events, but happened more contemporaneously. Like the Islamic conquests, for instance, you know, the Muslim um, conquests, they say that's lasted um, for 1400 years. But I think it's been relatively recently, you know, I think it's happened just in the last few hundred years where we see that Islam has grown in certain places throughout the world. And that Muhammad wasn't born in 571 AD or whatever, but more contemporaneous with those of the Italian Renaissance. And there's a lot of evidence to show this. But let's look at evidence, not only from historical, but from the Bible. And let's look at Psalms 94. I mentioned 2 Peter 3, 8, you know, where Peter is prophesying of end times um, and the, the day of the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years as a day uh, to the Lord. In Psalms 94, it says, For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night. And we know that many times it says in the Bible that Jesus comes as a thief in the night um, to watch, to be ready, because uh, we don't know if he's coming at the second watch, the third watch, the fourth watch, you know, this is all symbolic language for these end times that David, through the Holy Spirit, is prophesying in Psalms 94. But not only in Psalms 94, but if we go back to Psalms 84, verse 10, it says, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. And so this can be talking, the tents of wickedness is twofold. It's this worldly kingdom that we live in right now, uh, this unrighteous kingdom, um, which has the Antichrist spirit, but it's also our flesh, you know, our tabernacles of flesh, uh, which are corrupt. Um, and that's why we need to be born again. And because this flesh will perish. You know, if you're born once, you die twice. If you are born twice, you die once. And this thousand years in thy court can be in the, you know, a day in thy course is better than a thousand. That day could be talking about the heavenly realm, you know, once you're spiritually reborn, but also could be talking about your spiritual body once we are resurrected at the last day. Isaiah 60 verses 18 through 22 this again is talking of end times 
And in verse 18, it begins, Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. Thy sun shall no more come down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. So this little one becoming a thousand. This is speaking, I think, of the time of the millennial reign. Once God manifests in the flesh and Jesus came in the flesh to die for our sins, to lead us in this life and die for our sins, and then was resurrected on the third day, overcoming death. The gospel began at that time that we know the full extent of how God accomplished overcoming death for us and his promises that were given since creation that there would be life everlasting and there, there would be a Messiah, Christ to come, that would come into the world to be the Lamb of God, to sacrifice for mankind, for the forgiveness of sins and life eternal. That this little one is the nation within the millennial reign since the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The gospel has gone out and spreading to all nations over this time period. And this it started small. It started... Um, in Judea and then grew to Samaria and throughout the Mediterranean and then the uttermost parts of the earth as we see today. And this spiritual kingdom of believers that began at the creation is continuing through the gospel today during this millennial reign. This little one shall become a thousand. It's talking about the body of Christ, this thousand year millennial reign starting small since the death, burial, resurrection, and then ended up being, ending up being this strong nation as the fullness of the Gentiles um, has come. And so, you know, another verse is Ecclesiastes 6, 6. And, you know, this is Old Testament and Solomon writing the Ecclesiastes. And, you know, it talks about Prophecy, even in Ecclesiastes, um, in the Old Testament, you know, in the prophetic books, obviously, but also in the po poetic books. We see it in the historical books. It's throughout the Bible. Um, but in Ecclesiastes 6, verse 1, there's an evil which I have seen under the sun, and it is common among men. So in context, it is talking about evil men and those who have been given and trusted in earthly riches and wealth and honor and puffing themselves up. They don't think that their soul needs anything. They have not placed their faith in Christ. It says in verse 6, Yea, though he live a thousand years twice told, yet hath he seen no good. Do not all go to one place. So what is this thousand years twice told? Is Could this be King Solomon prophesying of evil men adding time to the calendar. This thousand year millennial reign since Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection to his second coming. What if this thousand years was twice told by evil men and the addition of a thousand years, this time period that we don't know hardly anything about the middle ages or dark ages. What if this is what Solomon is prophesying in Ecclesiastes 6.6? 6? So again, you know, this isn't a study just based on a whim. This is looking at prophecy and reading the Bible in its entirety and asking the Spirit for guidance, guidance to see if these things are so. So this is something that, again, I want to present. I want people to look at and talk about. If you disagree, give me good reasons. If you agree, then look at it further so that iron can sharpen iron, so that we can learn, so we can delve into scripture more. 
um, to peel back these layers of the Bible, these spiritual truths, and, and see if this is something of merit because there's a lot of evidence in the Bible that I found as well as historical evidence. So again, I hope you'll at least with an open mind, um, you know, hear out the matter and study it to see if these things are so before dismissing anything. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying it has merit through historical studies and through the Bible. So take a look at it. Let me know what you think. God bless.